Hi there, I'm Jim. And I'm Claire. And I'm Dana. Let's talk teaching. Welcome to Let's Talk Teaching, a podcast from the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Technology here at Illinois State University. I'm Jim G. Joining me today, two of my colleagues. First, Dr. Claire LaMonica, our director. Hey, Claire. Hi, Jim. And Dr. Dana Carricker, our coordinator for faculty development and special events. Welcome, Dana. Thanks, Jim. This is a special little one-off episode that we've... Well, I guess, Claire, it's become a tradition because this is the second time we've we're doing it. We've done it twice now. We, it's, it's a, a tradition. tradition. Yeah. Um, and we're talking about our upcoming teaching and learning symposium. So the theme for this year's uh, university-wide teaching and learning symposium, I say this year's, it's actually in 2019, is contemplative teaching, connecting meaning, purpose, and values. So the $64,000 question, (laughs) and Dana, this is for you. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, let Dana answer this one. (laughs) What is contemplative teaching? What is contemplative teaching? Well, that's a new ish thing for me. Well, it is a new thing for me. Mm-hmm. So, right. um, but it's very intriguing. So I can talk enough about it to entice people to to come learn more. Okay. I hope that's my intention. So I can't wait. <laughs> 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 so um, it changes the teaching approach from a third person approach to a first person approach. So when we think about teaching in third person, the third person approach to teaching is a didactic approach that Paolo Freire describes as a banking model of teaching, which is where the expert in the room, uh, the instructor, is responsible for taking their information and depositing into the heads of the learner. Mm-hmm. Um, not a particularly productive way of teaching and learning. Mm-hmm. Um, so he he talks about that banking model and and offers other options for for approaching learning in in the classroom. And so a pers- first person approach, which is what contemplative teaching is, is um, more about centering the learning on the people that are in the room, the mm-hmm. students, and um, connecting students with their learning, um, using their own experiences, motivations, and um, giving them opportunities to connect with their personal worlds, build relationships with peers, and um, also then extend their learning into the communities. So we talked a lot about Paula Freire and, mm-hmm. and the banking model and, mm-hmm. then, and then building a community of learners in, in a previous right. episode of mm-hmm. our podcast. So is contemplative teaching one way of doing that? Yes, because community is a big part of it. Okay. Um, so... The people that do this work have uh, kind of conceptualized the ideas of contemplative teaching using um, a tree. And at the root of the tree is the communication and the communion and connection, Mm -hmm. and the other is awareness. So part of of this contemplative teaching idea is um, in that community of learners, um, instructors and, and students together are becoming aware of who they are in the world, how their discipline plays out in the world, um, and then um, making those connections. So mm-hmm. that's that's the root, and then it branches out into a lot of different ideas. Yeah, so what are some of those ideas? Because I think that might help people mm-hmm. understand kind of mm-hmm. the, the concrete, uh, you know, what the takeaway is from mm-hmm. this idea of contemplative okay. teaching. All right, so there are several ways to incorporate aspects of contemplative teaching in the classroom. Um, and... When you hear the term contemplative, a lot of people turn to um, mindfulness, mm-hmm. and that is one. Yeah, that is one part of it. <laughs> Wait a minute, Claire. I'm hearing a little something, a little buzz in the audio. What was that again? Um, and, and that. Yeah. Um, so, people, if people are are familiar with mindfulness practices, um, and and that has to do with with um, preparing your mind to do the work, and so there. Um, has been research done on these types of practices that help um, with con- improve concentration and focus. Mm-hmm. So when we incorporate those um, practices in our classroom, you know, it improves <laughs> concentration mm-hmm. and sure. focus. Sure. And there are different ways that instructors can do that. Um, so it it's a time, you know, at the beginning of class where instructors um, take a little bit of time to um, help the students transition into the space and get themselves ready for learning. 
And that can take, you can do that in a number of ways. And I don't know a whole lot of those, but right. that is certainly something that, that I'm sure we'll learn um, through at, at the symposium. Well, and I guess that's, a, that's an important point for us to probably get out there early, which is the, the whole idea of having a symposium is that we're coming together and exploring things together, right, Claire? Right. So we're... We're going to be a community of learners. Exactly. Yes. So we're, for that day, we're yeah. going to do that. So we don't have all the answers right mm-hmm. now. I went to a um, conference session one time on, on mindfulness and teaching, and mm-hmm. um, the presenter started the uh, session by saying... How many people in the room have ever driven to the mall, parked their car, gone in, run your errands, you come back out, you have no idea where your car is. Right. It's like just you're just clueless. And and she said that's because we're not mindful in our everyday life. We don't take the time to look at where we are and think about where where we're going next and be able to come back to that place. And she said, this is what, you know, this is what I work with my students. When we come to class, I say, okay, we have to all be here. We have to um, concentrate on being in this place, in this space with these people talking about this subject and so that it sticks with us Mm -hmm. and we don't just leave here and go on to the next class without ever really taking this in. So Mm -hmm. um, I really liked that analogy and Mm -hmm. um, it it really stuck with me. And I, you know, I do from time to time at the start of something, a workshop or a class or something, just say, let's just stop for a minute, silence our phones, gather our thoughts, Mm -hmm. just be here. We're just going to sit and Mm -hmm. even just sit for 30 seconds Mm -hmm. and you know, then go on. Mm-hmm. We could model that right now, but I don't think it'd make a very compelling podcast. <laughs> no, that'd be, it'd be really bad radio. <laughs> it would be really bad radio. Yeah. So, you know, when, I remember when we were talking about what are we going to call the the theme, we were coming up with the title mm-hmm. for this year. And I think mindfulness was, was, uh, w- was very late in the game. We were, we're mm-hmm. still talking about working that term mindfulness into the overall theme, but then we realized that there are other aspects of contemplative teaching right. mm-hmm. beyond mindfulness. So what are some of those? Mm-hmm. Um, it's also about, well, we talked about the community of learners. So um, how are you, you structuring your, your classroom environment to foster peer interactions? Mm-hmm. Um, and there are several strategies that encourage students to find their own voices. And then, of course, that's that connecting the learning, you know, getting to that first person approach to learning that you're mm-hmm. connecting the learning to yourself and and your world and your experiences. Um, so different practices that we can incorporate in our classroom would be um, um, incorporating teaching students and offering opportunities for them to do deep listening. Mm-hmm. Um, and some people may be familiar with the term active listening, um, mm-hmm. and it differs a bit from from deep listening in that deep listening encourages um, engaging with others, body, speech, and mind. And so really paying attention to what others are saying, listening to their words, and trying to understand the motivations and perspectives behind those words, whereas active listening is more um, listening strategies that that indicate to the the speaker, the person delivering the message, that you are hearing them, asking clarification, and paraphrasing, you know, just to Mm -hmm. know that Mm -hmm. that you've heard. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think the deep listening is that you understand. And it isn't always to come to agreement with what that person's saying, but just to know that that you at least are understanding their perspectives. Um, So that's one one way you can foster those peer interactions. Helping students see how your discipline works in the world. So this is the civic engagement piece. So Mm -hmm. one thing that, um, that you'll notice in in the literature's contemplative teaching um, is this mindfulness piece, but it's also strongly connected to social justice and and, um, has strong connections to civic engagement, which is nice with our our mission at our university. Absolutely. Um, So ways to do that, you know, again, we're moving from that didactic third-person approach, that sit-and-get approach to teaching, to really encouraging students to think about how the content relates to them, their lives, their worlds. Um, And we can do that through a variety of of ways. And one thing that our keynote will be doing, um, and 
is bringing art into it, and she'll be doing it through music, which mm -hmm. I'm very intrigued by. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to see how, seeing how she does that. Um, so, um, you know, bringing in the arts, um, incorporating reflection, journaling, free writing, and then um, also asking your students to um, interact with the readings in particular ways. Oh, I so, see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the the actual sessions that are going to be going on because, you know, this is a this is a um, broad topic mm -hmm. because it encompasses a lot of things that normally like civic engagement or mindfulness would have been a theme right Claire in and of its own By itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah um and so we have a we have i think a, a pretty interesting variety of sessions that were proposed by faculty members on campus and by staff on campus are there a couple that stand out to you that you want to highlight right now um we do have some people who are are actually incorporating some components of contemplative teaching in their courses right now. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have some sessions from faculty who will be sharing their the, what they've been doing in their classes. So mm -hmm. on mindfulness, um, the student-centered um, type learning things. So we have several sessions on, on that. Um, of course, our, our keynote will be doing a session, a workshop, workshop session in the morning. Yeah. Um, and um, she's calling that advancing youth of color, thriving through mindfulness and critical contemplative approaches. And, and we should probably mm -hmm. introduce our keynote speaker, oh, yes, uh, yes. Dr. Dr. Michelle, Michelle Chapman, Chapman. Mm -hmm. from the University of Washington, D.C. Cool. And so um, she is a professor of criminal justice. Um, and so she has been um, studying this and incorporating it in her research and her teaching. So in both of her sessions, she is, like I said, one of the one thing you can do with contemplative teaching is bring in the arts. And so she will be using um, music in both of her sessions. So mm -hmm. um, jazz in particular. So I'm I'm very intrigued by that and and, mm -hmm. to, and seeing how she how she does that. And and she'll also be incorporating spoken word um, as we take those art forms and think about how we interact with others in the classroom. And we should tell people our complete the complete schedule is already online. Mm -hmm. So if you go to our website, ctlt.illinoisstate.edu, you can't miss the big symposium logo on the homepage. And that will get you to the main symposium page. And from there, you can get to the guide in many forms. Uh, and more forms are coming. Uh, and you can get a complete list of all the sessions, which is, which is great because the registration deadline is December 14th. Claire, isn't it nice to be able to know what the sessions are before the deadlines are registered? It's that doesn't lovely. happen all the time. I hope I hope that um, everybody will. I hope that everybody who hears this will go on to our website and check out the sessions because I'm sure you're going to find something that will appeal to you. And um, I mean, you know, well, th there is the caramel apple pie, which appeals to everybody. Uh, actually, <laughs> actually. Oh no, no caramel apple pie. You didn't. You didn't oh, know this. Oh, this is just being broken to me. Breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind. Forget the caramel apple pie. Um, on the caramel apple pie is apparently no longer available. Available. There is uh, something new that cook left. We're going. We're going to. We will. This may be our chance to practice mindful eating as well. <laughs> um, and we'll, we yes. we shall see. So no, the famous, now oh, infamous okay. caramel apple pie is not available, but. Uh, we do have some cool swag we're giving away, though. We yeah. won't tell people what it is, but we have some come cool for swag. The, come yeah. for the come for the swag, stay for the sessions. I, I you know. I'm really um, it's really fun hearing Dana talking about this because as I'm listening and hearing all of the elements that are pulled together when we're thinking about contemplative teaching, these are all things we're talking about on our campus. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, this um, the importance of closing the retention gap. We have. Retention numbers that look great until you start breaking them down by, you know, specific groups of subgroups of students and realizing that we have real gaps in terms of retention. And mm -hmm. um, I, I think that it sounds like the keynote will will address that yes, will. to a certain mm -hmm. extent. And, of course, civic engagement, which is really important, really important to all of us. So mm -hmm. there's a and, – and, oh, and teaching and learning, which – Yeah, there is oh, the teaching look, part, that's too, right? what yeah. we do here. Right. So that's pretty exciting, too. And I had a great um, standing-in-line conversation with somebody yesterday who's uh, – doing a poster that is just spot on about this about mm. this topic. She's been mm -hmm. researching the effects of mindfulness on her students. She's been introducing mindfulness um, practice into her teaching and, and researching 
the results and, and the impact that it's having on her students, even to the point she has a colleague, they're doing some, I think it's biological testing or brainwave testing or something. It's, wow. I mean, they're really, they're mm -hmm. taking this from a lot of perspectives. So there's just going to be a lot of good stuff mm -hmm. there. I'm, I'm really excited about the way this has come together. Mm -hmm. And we are too. And she mentioned posters. So I don't think we've discussed the, the different um, formats for mm -hmm. presentations that we have. Um, we'll have individual presentations. We have panel presentations and poster presentations. And then we'll start off the day with a keynote workshop. But we also have what we call our idea cafe. And for mm -hmm. those of people who attend conferences, sometimes they're called round tables. But we like the idea of cafe because a lot of times um, a lot of interesting conversation and learning happens in those informal settings as coffee shops, cafes, where people sit in, at tables and mm -hmm. and talk. So we will have some people leading some conversations to start off the morning. And that's a kind of easy way to yeah. ease into the day. It, I think this is the second mm -hmm. or third year that yep. we've done something like mm -hmm. this. And it, it kind of takes the edge off the morning a little bit. <laughs> I, 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 I kind of like that. And then I think also going on at that time, we're also having a session with Adobe who's coming right. in, which mm -hmm. is which is just kind of an opportunity since the faculty is going to be there. They're going to be talking about the new technology that we're, we've brought to campus mm -hmm. uh, and and with a focus on teaching and learning, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. So so several options in the morning yeah. um, as people yeah. think about how to plan their day. And then, uh, and then the poster session is in the uh, evening. It, 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 late afternoon. It, late it, afternoon. it caps the day, as it were. Right. Mm -hmm. Speaking of taking the edge off, I do believe there are drink <laughs> tickets involved. <laughs> um, so... Please tell me we haven't canceled the drink tish. No, no, no. Oh, that the, would be no, your call. No, okay. no, yeah. the, uh, okay. no. That that is okay. still apparently procurable. Okay, that's great. Uh, as opposed to the aforementioned caramel apple pie. So, <laughs> so to wrap it up, Claire, for people who have never come to the symposium here on campus, or for those folks who haven't been back in a while, why should they bother? You know, this is just this is just the best way to start off the semester. I mean, I I can't, and that's that's not an original quote. That's something that mm -hmm. I have been told over and over and over again by faculty who come to this. You know, it's almost it's almost sort of a a meta contemplative or or you know mindfulness thing. It's it's getting your head back into that teaching space, but it's after you know after a winter break, but it's also making connections with mm -hmm. people that you may only see a couple of times a year or a few yeah. times a year, having great conversations with colleagues. We try to, we've been very intentional the last few years um, in response to feedback that we got about we want more time to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And so we've, we've tried to build in additional time for people to have hallway conversations or to sit down at the Idea Cafe together or just have a cup of coffee. So it's really, it really recharges your energy mm -hmm. with a teaching focus in a way that having a break, you know, it always sounds really restful, but in a way it sort of pulls you away from that, you know, it can sort of pull you away from that teaching thing. And, and then when mm -hmm. you get back, this is a great way to just sort of plug back in, get re-energized, and you're off and running for the semester. Well, we hope people will join us. So the actual date for the symposium, which I don't think we mentioned yet, is <laughs> oh, is, yeah. is Wednesday, January, January 9th. 9th. Wednesday, January 9th. It's at the Marriott uh, Conference Center in Normal. And it's free. It mm -hmm. is it is free. You have to register by Friday, December 14th. So to do that, again, go to our website, ctlt.illinoisstate.edu. Claire, Dana, thanks so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Jim. And that's all the time we have for this episode of Let's Talk Teaching. Find out more about the symposium and about our podcast, again, ctlt.illinoisstate.edu. For Dr. Claire LaMonica, for Dr. Dana Carricker, for all of my colleagues here at the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Technology, until we talk again, happy teaching. Happy teaching.